Hey guys, it's been a while since I put up a video. Um, my last trip to Vegas, um, I didn't like. Um, I don't know if my card has this guy, you know, as whatever, but uh, most of the time I don't play until it's my turn. And I sat there and got yelled at because I wasn't putting out any money in the table until it was my turn. Um, and the same place, um, there was this one old lady and she was rolling and the dice would, the dice would end up, you know, like here after she got done rolling and they never would say anything to her. And she was winning quite a bit of money, but then other people that the dice would, you know, end up right here, they're like, oh, you gotta hit the back of the table, you gotta hit the back of the table. Um, another time I sat there and approached the table and I went to go give my card to them. And I left, uh, I put up my cell phone charger on the rail. It's black, it's all it is, just black. I mean, it does look like a phone, but there's no, there's nothing on it. You got yelled at about that. So, I guess from now on, I'm, I'm not going to sit there and put up my card, I don't know. You post, uh, why don't you post and put down uh, what you guys do? Do you say, you guys give them your card, so they know who you are, do you just uh, leave it blank? And just play uh, without the comps. Um, I'm not for sure. But uh, the biggest thing is, um, if you're going to a new table, and uh, even even if you've been there before, they might have changed the table. And each table is different, especially if you are not a random roller. If you are a set player, you set the dice every single time you ought to practice first. And there's nothing worse than losing money as you're practicing. So what I do, um, and it doesn't matter what the uh, what the denomination is of the table, um, I like playing uh, this one table and sometimes they'll have the uh, they'll have minimum up to 15 bucks. So you want to practice and you want to play that table because there's like three people playing. Well, that's the way to sit there and start practicing. The only thing that's going to get you is hitting a 12. And you can practice. It's not going to, you're not going to lose any money whatsoever. You don't have to make any other bets. You can just leave it just like that and you can practice. You can practice however you want to. This is also a good time if you were playing the high, low, and all bonus bet in the middle of the table. And you just wanted to put the three dollars in there, one for each one. Well, that's going to cover it, unless of course on the come up roll you hit a twelve. But that's probably not going to happen very often. Three and one is a four. That's the easiest way to practice, and it doesn't cost you. It didn't cost me anything. I'm just sitting here practicing. If I seven out now, I lose nothing. But that's how I would start the day off. Try out a table, get your feel for it. If you don't like it, you know, you can make some changes, do some different dice uh, combinations. If you uh, want to see dice combinations, I'm sure you can Google it, you know. There's the, uh, you know, the V set. You have uh, the two as well. That can be a V set. You know, each, everyone's got, you know, a set. And you need to practice, you know, what they are and try out your table. Do it this way. It doesn't cost you anything. And you can roll until you get a seven. And it costs you absolutely nothing. Six and three. Nine. And they can't say anything about it. One person had the probability, it was color up. Color up had the probability of hitting the all tall small. I was on a cruise and I hit it, uh, 
I think I hit the uh, all five times. And the cruise was only for four days. And it's not like that's the only thing I hit. That's a seven. That's not the only thing I did on the cruise is sit there and play craps. Each table is different. I don't know what that table was. It was almost like a... Uh, it reminded me of the texture of a basketball. It was rubbery. Um, didn't have much bounce to it. And that's the table I really like. But uh, going to Vegas... You certainly do not uh, see tables at all like that. Nine. I like the uh, playing the golden nugget. I got used to this one table and I went back a couple months later and it felt different. It rolled different. What I used to could you know do to control my dice, I could no longer do. And it'd be good to find uh, find that out before you lose your money. Seven. Not doing so good. So now you're going to sit there and say, well, that, that dice combination is not working, right? Let's try a different one. And again, I mean, they'll sit there and take this, you know, and then you, you, know, you take it back or they'll... They'll do that, and you you know take it back. Didn't lose any money yet. And if you're if you were playing the all tall small, you'd only lost six bucks so far. That's the only money you would have lost. But it's basically uh, free practice. Free practice, so you can change change it up. Change what you're doing. I'll watch uh, this one guy. I won't name any names. But he always has some weird, weird way. I mean, just weird. Putting 96 across and yeah, I tried that. I've never yet found any of this stuff helpful. Absolutely none of this stuff helpful. Go there with a plan. Six. When you're practicing, you can bring a notepad with you. You can bring a pen with you. You can lay it right up on the table. You can mark down what you're hitting, what you're not hitting. Six and eight. That'd be a great thing to sit there and bet on. Six and eight, pass line. And all I'm doing is just the V set, three, one, three, two. It seems to be working really good, but you won't know until you roll longer. Five and four, nine. All we want to do is stay away from that horrible stuff. When you're die setters, do you ever get mad at people that uh, play on the dark side? They'll just come up to the table, won't even see what's going on. Hey, you got no point. And then they start playing on the dark side. I was at one casino, guys started playing the dark side and uh, I was the one throwing. And I said, uh, you know, you might, you might not want to do that. He just looked at me and scoffed. Huh, you know, whatever. Well, after a thousand dollars out of his pocket into the casino, he walked away from the table. And I just can't imagine just throwing out a thousand dollars. 
It might have been, it might have worked on a cold table. But if you ever see anybody dice it, you probably shouldn't do that. grip is kind of like this. It's not the very edge. This finger here is actually down more, kind of like lazy. Well, now all I have to do is just hit my horns. So if you came up to the table and you started playing this way, It'd be a good indication your die set is working and the only thing left you have to do is hit the horns. Five, four, and one. Sometimes the horns are the hardest ones to hit when you're a die setter. Sometimes it's the easiest ones to, to hit when you're a die setter. It's everything else in the middle you can't ever hit. Five. Four to one. That's when you know your die set's working. When you continually repeat the same number, it's the same throw. The same spin on the dice. Six and three, that's a niner. This would be a good betting system if you had the uh, if you had place bets. Seven out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I'll take that. Let me know in the comments, guys. Thank you for watching. Later.